Greetings fellow computer enthusiasts. Uh, my name is Justin and this video tutorial uh, details how to log on to a mainframe computer system. Now there's, we're not going to do much in this uh, tutorial. We'll do much we'll do much more in, on the mainframe in, in um, future tutorials. But this tutorial is just to show you how to log on to a mainframe, get you started. Now having getting access to a mainframe is not that easy and you know it's very expensive so you may not be able to get, um, have be able to get access to it as easily as you would other systems. Um, but this is just a way to show you what it looks like and show you how it's done. Um, now we're logging on to a public access mainframe which is running the ZOS operating system. Now the ZOS operating system is one of the four operating systems that run on an IBM mainframe computer system. ZOS used to be called OS 390 and before that it used to be called MVS, multiple volume storage. Now MVS has its roots back in the early 1960s so MVS has been around for a while and ZOS is based, it's the newest version of MVS. Okay? Um, there, the other operating system that can run on an IBM uh, mainframe computer system is called VSE and VSE had different names through its lifetime um, in different incarnations but VSE is another mainframe operating system, a little less popular than ZOS, which is for less busy environments, less intensive environments, smaller environments. So they would, but they still need them, but they still, they're big enough to constitute a mainframe, but not big enough for ZOS. So slightly cheaper, I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe it is slightly cheaper and um, it's for less workload, a lesser workload. So you would use VSE. A third operating system that runs on IBM mainframe is called um, TPF. TPF stands for Transaction um, per, uh, Processing Facility. Again, it's Transaction Processing Facility, TPF. And TPF is a specialized mainframe operating system that's been optimized for transaction processing, just real quick, bam, 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 transactions. And it's uh, mainly used by airlines to um, by airlines to process a lot of their reservations, plane locations. You know, airlines are, are, are by nature have a lot of processing in the IT department, a lot of processing, very processing intensive and TPF was basically designed for that. Um, other industries use it too but airlines are the most uh, common ones that use TPF mainframe operating systems. Um, the other mainframe operating system is Z Linux they call it, Linux on, on Z series on, which means Linux on mainframe. The Linux operating system does run on a mainframe computer and it actually runs faster than any other platform. So it's very, uh, Linux on mainframe, on mainframe hardware is very, uh, is very popular. Um, the mainframe hardware, we talked about the different operating systems, but the mainframe hardware is under a category, this is just a sales term, a marketing term mind you, is under a sales term in IBM called Z series. Z stands for zero downtime, which again is an IBM marketing term. Okay, so Z series Z series computer systems are um, mainframes, and there are three mainframes available. There's the 196 model, which is the uh, biggest mainframe, and our IBM's claiming the most powerful computer in the world. Um, then our fastest computer, or whatever they say. Uh, then you have the uh, enterprise class and the business class. Okay, so there's not really a lot of models of of IBM mainframes, but IBM still 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 sells a mainframe. Now the mainframe, you all heard rumors, it's been nicknamed the dinosaur and the mainframe has been predicted to die um, and be replaced by mid-range systems which are Unix and Linux systems and Windows systems um, for the last 10 years now. And a lot of mainframes consolidation projects that we call them have been happening. A lot of mainframes have been being removed from data centers and been replaced by these mid-range systems, Unix, Linux, and Windows boxes. But IBM is still claiming that sales are, are, are high on mainframes, sales are up, and that they're still selling them. So, And a lot of companies that have been around for a while go by um, the thought process of if it's not broken, why fix it? So a lot of people still maintain their mainframe OS. So mainframes are still out there. Um, I know a lot of I know, I know a lot of people who still run the companies that still run mainframes as a fact. A lot of them do. So this is just so mainframe is still out there. So to log on to a mainframe, I downloaded a special mainframe connect application called a 3270 emulator. And a 3270 this is called HTC um, or HTN I believe. And some of them are free of charge, and some of them you need to pay a license fee for. Now these 
the reason why you need a special program to connect to a mainframe is that mainframes used to have a 3270 terminal, which was a dumb terminal, D-U-M-B, with the black background green text, which I'm sure you've all seen, the green font. And it, they, these terminals used to be hardwired into the mainframe, okay? So, but we don't need that anymore since it's a world of remote connectivity and things of that nature. So now you can get an application that's, that emulates, it's a terminal emulator that emulates 3270 and lets you connect to a mainframe. So, we double click on our mainframe and the mainframe, this, this, our, I mean on our terminal emulator app and this terminal emulator app is, I have it pre-configured to point to this public access mainframe. And all I did was type in an IP address, well, a host name, and it, and it connected. So here we are in our HTN3270 terminal emulator, mainframe operating system, ZOS version 1.6, welcome to mainframe system. Now you'll see that um, this is a customizable screen, okay? And you won't see this exact screen on at all your locations, okay? You'll see a screen that says, um, actually you won't see it in any other location but this. Um, you'll see um, a screen like this for a bank that says that may say a bank mainframe when you connect to it via that application by the 3270 you double click on it it may come up and say in the screen bank USA's mainframe um, and then like some kind of legal disclosure that says uh, you know anyone that compromises the system or not authorized to use it will be prosecuted for the full extent of the law blah 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 okay uh, so but I'm gonna take you now so just kind of ignore this I'm gonna take you now to where you will see this um, where you will see generally on all mainframe sites now when you connect to a mainframe system you're gonna it's gonna ask you for your user ID so you need to authentic you need to identify yourself to the mainframe system and the mainframe system needs to identify you before you can log on just like any other computer system if you have user IDs and passwords set up so I'm gonna log in with my user ID JRB123 now it's going to take me to the TSOE logon screen now TSO stands for time sharing option again it's time sharing option and the E on the other side of the slash means extended so time sharing option extended or enhanced whatever you want to call it it's like a new version of TSO TSO has been around forever and TSO is the program that you use to log into a mainframe operating system it's your shell, if you if you will, your bash shell, your corn shell, whatever shell you're using in Unix or Linux systems. That's basically what this is. So we logged in as JRB123. We identified ourselves as this um, in a previous screen. Now the TSO logon panel um, screen is asking us for our password. If we type in the wrong password here, which I know LL I typed in is the wrong password, we, um, the mainframe will give us an error saying password not authorized for user ID. So I type in my real password, correct password, and I get a message saying that the last time I accessed the system, a little fundamental security measure there. If it said Saturday and it's Monday and you knew the last time you logged on was Friday, then you know that maybe someone's compromising your mainframe account. Much more in advanced security mechanisms on a mainframe operating system, but that's basically uh, it. That's, that's one of them. And it's telling you that you're currently logging on to the system. Now this right here is a broadcast message, okay, and the broadcast message is set by system programmers, mainframe system programmers, and it's for all users to see when they log on. And it may have a legal disclosure, it may say something about the environment, about the system like this one does. Um, it, this is a test, public access test mainframe, so it's telling you what's available to you to test with, what programs, IBM programs are available. Um, it may even tell you about an upcoming reboot during an outage window this Sunday the mainframe will be unavailable from this time to this time um, a reboot in the mainframe world is called an IPL when you boot a, you don't boot a mainframe you IPL it that's just a mainframe term and and um, you'll see as we go through these mainframe tutorials especially more advanced mainframe t tutorials you will see um, you will hear all them I'll introduce you to all the mainframe terms there's a lot of them okay um, but when you boot a mainframe, basically you're IPL in it. IPL means initial program load. And when you reboot a mainframe, I guess it's called re-IPL. So a, a, a message in a broadcast may be a message that says um, there's a this mainframe is is scheduled to be IPL this Sunday at whatever. Okay. Um, notice these three asterisks 
on the bottom here. They are significant. They have nothing to do with the asterisk surrounding the, the uh, broadcast message. It's just a coincidence they used asterisks. Okay. Um, this means that there's that if you hit enter, that there's more that this program wants to show you. It's not done feed and output. Okay. Mainframe doesn't scroll by default. Okay. It pauses. It fills the screen and then it pauses. And it give, and those three asterisks mean hit enter and you'll see what else I have to show you. So we hit enter and we are automatically put into this menu program called ISPF. And ISPF stands for Interactive System Productivity Facility. Again, that's um, Interactive System Productivity Facility. And this is a licensed program, as you can see here. You have to, uh, you have to pay a fee from IBM to use it. And it doesn't come with ZOS. You have to pay for it and install it separately uh, for, for the most part. And um, whatever the IBM packaging options are, um, but most sites like like this computer system, for instance, when you log on with TSO, it automatically puts you in ISPF because everyone basically uses ISPF. I I'd, I'd say the, the typical mainframe professional spends about 98%, if not more, in ISPF, and it's just a menu system for getting around for interacting with the mainframe a little easier. Okay, and um, so most installations will have you logging on to TSO, and then it will, and then the mainframe programmer will set the mainframe so it automatically launches ISPF for you, which it did in this case. We logged in with TSO, we got our broadcast message, and we logged, and it automatically launched ISPF. So to start using ISPF, you hit Enter to get rid of the um, license legal mumbo jumbo, and now you're in ISPF, and now you can select these options, move around ISPF, and do what you have to do. And you can do anything from creating files on the mainframe, which we call data sets to uh, managing users, submitting jobs, which are basically running programs, uh, uh, programming and doing whatever, whatever else you need to do can be done in ISPF. And we'll get to those uh, advanced topics uh, later. So um, let's go ahead and exit out of ISPF. And we do that with an X, and it tells you that right here. And you'll notice it's ready on your screen now. Now this is the TSO prompt, kind of like your C colon prompt in DOS on Windows systems or your uh, pound sign prompt on Unix or Linux systems or dollar sign prompt on Unix and Linux systems. It basically said, ready, the ready word basically says TSO is ready to accept commands from you. And TSO has a lot of commands you can issue, which we'll get to. Okay, so ready basically means I am, TSO is ready to do, to, to take instructions from you, the mainframe user. Okay? Now, as I said before, some installations don't go right in SP ISPF right off the bat um, automatically when you log on via TSO. So if that's the case, as soon as you get the as soon as you log on to TSO on some mainframes and you get your broadcast message, you'll get this ready prompt, and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know TSO commands. What am I supposed to do? Well, if ISPF is installed, and contact your mainframe system programmer to see if it is. Type in ISPF like that, and it'll launch it. So that that's all the that that log on procedure uh, we, is doing under the covers when you log into TSO. It's issuing that ISPF command. Okay? And that will get you back in ISPF. So, to log out, we log out of ISPF and then we type in log off. And there's the message. JRB123 logged off TSO. Basically logged off the mainframe at this time on this date. So, that's basically how you log on to a mainframe, what it kind of looks like, that you need an, you do need to know that you need a, a specialized terminal emulator application to do it, and you need to point to an IP address or a resolved host name, um, and um, that's how basically you get in, you log in with TSO, if, if you have an ID defined to the mainframe, system programmer can do that for you, um, and um, the ISPF menu, you get your broadcast message, ISPF is a menu system that allows you to move through the mainframe and do mainframe tests more easily and you learned how to log off. Alright, so stay tuned for future mainframe videos where we really get into the nitty gritty on how to work with a mainframe.